you've been a little bit tentative about your lines, which is very understandable. For example, you haven't quite defined this eye as much as you could. You have it in the right place, so let's go ahead and say there's the edge, and we'll make it a little darker at the edges, and there's the edge, again, a little darker. Mm -hmm. We're gonna leave some light, but we're gonna make this center very dark. So the minute I do that, it's a little more lively. And then you'll also notice that this line that defines the upper eye in particular is very dark. And it comes down here, if you notice the curve of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This other line kind of comes in here. So we can be pretty dark there. This is good, you've got that upper lid. Then there's a little area before the eyebrow, and then the eyebrow is pretty dark, so you might want to look at that. Here, once you get that shadow, blend it in a little bit, and it'll start to look more realistic. Now, your overall shape that you started with is a little too narrow. It's okay, we just want to go back now and see about how much width do we have from here to here, and from here to here. And then let's just draw this shape, roughly here, and know that the hair is going to widen out from the, it adds to the size of the skull. And then you might also want to check your measurements here and see how wide is it from here to here, or here to here, so that you begin to get a little bit greater sense of that shape. Okay, now one thing that happened is that the original line here is just slightly slanted, mm -hmm. which means that this eye got a little higher than we want it to be, and even after all the trouble, oh, it's still, I know, it's terrible. That's why I say it's hard to kind of give up after all that effort. But go ahead and start over if you need to, so that you can be sure that these eyes are placed in a way that they're aligned with each other. This line, you'll notice kind of here, comes out a little further, mm -hmm. and then the other line meets it under here. Check back and forth between the two eyes you're drawing from time to time to be sure they're the same size and shape. Sometimes one of them will end up a little bit different than the other, which <laughs> a little difference is okay, but too much can be pretty oh, disconcerting looking. Oh. So now we've got that eye down a little bit more in the right relationship. Now the shadow that you've drawn for the nose needs to extend, as you'll see it does on the photo, all the way up into here. You see that shadow comes yeah. all the way down. And then it gets a little darker here. On the lips, let me look at the line where the lips meet. I'm going to make it a little bit darker so we can really see where it is. And then here, you've got it drawn a little bit too heavily. Mm -hmm. So let's use the side of the pencil again and get just a little gray for that mm -hmm. lip. And then you can very carefully look, where does it go? You know, and sometimes that whole mouth will end up not quite centered under the nose. Again, this line may not be perfectly straight. <laughs> So let's see, is the mouth okay or is it over a little bit? Is it equally under both eyes? Well, why don't you go up as I see here? That yes, you're right. It does kind of go up right there. So we'll, we'll make it go up there. But I'm going to just move it just a t little bit over there. Now let's see if that looks a little closer to what we want. Well, if this one is too straight, his mouth is goes. It slanted up there. Okay, so you could change that to slant it up. That's fine. Let me just mm -hmm. suggest one more thing, and that is that this distance here is just a little too wide, and if we make a slight adjustment and move that distance in, I think it's going to feel a little better. Mm -hmm. The same is true over here. Just a slight mm -hmm. adjustment in will make that feel different to you. Good. Okay. okay. Now, this, what happens a lot of times is people draw the head, and then they add the hair. But what they forget is that the hair is going to add to the fullness of the head. In other words, it's going to stick out from the head. The ears are going to come down a little bit further down here, closer to the end of the nose. And then again, I'm going to just sort of smear some of your mm -hmm. lines, because you've got a lot of lines in here. Let's just sort of smooth them out. And let me show you how you can draw with an eraser. So I've sort of smooth this out. Mm -hmm. Now, I can come back and add a highlight mm -hmm. along here, mm -hmm. and a highlight mm -hmm. along here, and maybe here and here, and it'll begin to add some form to it just because of those light lines. Mm -hmm. His chin, the distance between the lower lip and the chin, if we measure it, I think you'll find it's up just a little bit higher. So let's move it up here and see if that helps the overall feeling. And we'll go ahead and darken as you've started to do. We'll darken the neck a bit. Mm -hmm. And again, we can smear that in. Mm -hmm. 
Then we'll bring the jaw up here. Now, you'll notice on, on one side of the photograph, we see it pretty much of a straight line mm -hmm. from jaw to mm -hmm. neck. Here, the neck is in a little bit. So mm -hmm. let's bring it in just a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And then show that the jaw comes down, and it almost takes a mm -hmm. turn there. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the width here. He's got a pretty wide expanse across his forehead, mm -hmm. and you've tended to come in a little mm -hmm. bit, mm -hmm. whereas, in fact, it almost squares off. So again, the eraser is very handy. We'll just give him some more space up here for his forehead. And then notice that the line tends to go mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. up in here. Mm -hmm. OK? Mm -hmm. When I look at the photograph upside down and the drawing, then I can make some interesting comparisons. I may choose to darken this whole area the way it is on the photograph. And for that, I'll just use the side of my pencil and rub it along the paper and create a gray area. I can blend that more with my finger if I like. The person working on this drawing had already indicated a little area here where the shadow gets darker. And I can darken up the line of the neck. And then when I look at this shape right here, I see that it looks sort of like this. It goes along here. And again, I might decide to shadow that in even darker as the shirt goes around behind the neck. That would be one option. When I look at the lip, I see that I can't quite define the upper lip here. It's very subtly suggested. And it can be subtle, but I might add a little bit of gray to the upper lip just so we can see where that is, and maybe a few lines that just indicate that edge. Sometimes on people's mouths, you'll notice little subtle lines. They're so subtle that I usually leave them out or make them very faint. It's good to have a little suggestion of them, but if you make them too strong, that doesn't work too well. There's a very subtle shadow here, which the person has indicated. I'll just pick up a little pencil on my fingertip and smear it over here to add that subtle shadow. Then for contrast, and to make this a little bit more dramatic, I might darken the hair. The person working on this has already done a good job of defining the hair. And I might just fill it in very dark in most areas. But you know, I don't have to color the whole thing in. Suppose I just indicate the darkness where it comes down near the sideburn area and around the edges, fill some of that in, and then take the time to draw a few of the specific darker curls, especially where they meet the forehead. Then you kind of get a sense of the dimension without having to draw each detail. The same would be true of these outside shapes. I notice a shadow here now. As you'll see, I jump around from one area of the face to another, down to the neck now, where I see a dark shadow created by the shirt, and another line created by the collar that comes down this way. I could continue working upside down. And of course, at any point, you can turn the photo around and take a look at it, too. When I do that, I notice that this dark line, which is a shadow, but it's a little too dark. So I'm just going to erase that and put it back in as just a little bit more of a gray shape with shadows slightly on either side of it to give that dimension. I also notice these lines are rather dark. And although there is a dark shadow there, I'm going to just make it a little bit more of a shape than a definitive line. And then I'll blend that a little bit, too. Now, let me turn the photo around as well. And let's take a look here. The one thing that I notice is that the neck here, the jawline and neck, are almost one continuous line. Over here, they're not, so that this neck on the drawing looks a little thin. So let's just bring it out here. And you'll see a little thing like that can make quite a difference to the strength of the drawing. So then, of course, the collar would also change a little bit as well. This drawing has some areas that are rather tentative, where the artist is not exactly certain where the eyebrow goes and has drawn a number of lines. But generally, it's correct. So all I want to do is go back and be a little more clear, because the eyebrow is darker than the area around it. I'll darken it in a bit. And then I'll just smooth that shadow of the nose and around the eye a bit. Also, there's a very definitive dark line 
around the eye, especially the upper lid. I'm going to darken the eye itself a little bit more. And then I'm going to look at the shape of the shadow of the nose. And I might take my eraser and just go back in and add a little highlight. We'll get rid of this central line. Some of those lines we put down first for drawing the face or the figure, we later erase because they're no longer necessary or part of the drawing. Again, there's a little hesitancy to draw this line where the lips meet as dark as it could be. And also, the mouth is just a little high. It's a little too close to the nose. So this is one of those horrible moments when you have to erase the mouth that you just drew so carefully. So as the artist gasps in the background, I erase the mouth that she drew. And the mouth was well drawn. I'm going to just lower it a little bit so that we have just a little bit more room between the nose and mouth. And that's going to feel a little bit different in terms of the proportions. And then some more time could be taken to render this mouth more fully. Again, where we see the Adam's apple here, that's defined by shadow. And with the side of my pencil, I can just create a little shadow, and we'll get the feel of that. A little shadow coming down here, where the neck meets the shoulder. And then a much darker line as this collar comes around. Again, it's very dark back here behind the collar. Those nice dark areas. At first, when you're drawing, you might hesitate to go really dark. But after a while, you'll see the benefits. Again, the eyebrow is very dark. And the hair, which again has been placed accurately, but a little bit tentatively. So let's be definitive. There's a pretty clear line where the hair meets the head here. And so we might want to really define that. And then with the side of the pencil, shadow in the side of the face, which is darker, because it is in shadow here. If I shadow this too much, it's going to blend with the neck. So now I'll go back and make it a little darker behind the chin, back on the neck. Things that are darker generally tend to appear to be further away. So if I darken the neck, it'll look like it's behind the chin a little bit. I could continue just making this a little bit more bold by darkening certain areas, like the eye, and so on. The ear, there's a very distinct outline here. So let's see if we can find that outline and be very clear about what it is. Then later, you may decide that you want to use the side of your pencil to fill in a whole area behind. And maybe you won't fill in the hair completely, but again, just let us know where this hair ends. What, what's that outline there? Right where the head meets the hair, there's quite a difference from the skin tone to the dark hair. So you might want to have a real clear line of demarcation there as well. When I look at this drawing, I'm reminded of a common problem when you're drawing the face and figure. And that is sometimes we try to squeeze the body into the shape available or the space available on the page. So for example, here we've got a head, which let's say the head's roughly this size. And then the shoulders and arms maybe take up this much room in, in, in the photograph. They're pretty big space. Now, if we look at the drawing, we see a lot of attention has been paid to, the, to drawing the head. And the shoulders and arms have been fit on the page down here, but there really isn't room for them. So if I look at this drawing and I follow this line out, it probably, his shoulder would go right off the page. And probably this shoulder would go right off the page. If I measure the length of his head, against the opening of his shirt, I'll find they're about the same, which means that his shirt opening would come all the way down here somewhere, and we wouldn't even see his arms crossing. There just isn't room for them to show up on the piece of paper. So the minute that we do that, then we have different proportions to work with. So we have the collar, let's say, roughly here. And if we were to continue, the arms would be way down here somewhere. Now, when I compare the drawing face to the photo face, they're pretty close. One way to improve is to look at the distance from the mouth to the chin and the shape of the chin. The shape of the chin here is something like this. It comes down about like this. And in our drawing, we have it squared off quite a bit more. So I'm going to watch that jaw come down and then in and come down this way and then in here. 
So I'll erase a little bit here so we can see where our lines are. Now, the nose, the relationship between nose and mouth looks pretty good. Mouth to chin looks like I've got maybe a little bit too much chin there. Now, all of these little lines that have been drawn here for shadow are a little bit distracting because they look like separate lines. So I'm going to use the side of my pencil and blend some of these lines together a bit so that they become more like one area. Remembering that I always have my eraser available if I want to add a highlight anywhere on the page, I can do that. Then I'm going to look more closely at the eye and see where the lid comes in. You need to define exactly where the eyelids are, particularly that top eyelid, so that the eye doesn't get sort of lost or too vague. And because there's a very strong shadow on one side of the face, I'm going to fill in that shadow area even further. Now I notice it gets really black down in here where the shadow disappears into the shirt and the shadow sort of wraps around the neck a little bit. So I'll enhance that line, that shadow as well. When I look at his forehead and measure distances here, I see that the hairline is pretty close, but I have a feeling it's up just a little bit higher so I'm, and a little bit wider. So I'm going to try moving that hairline over just a bit. And remember, this is a really important one. When you add hair, it's going to add to the size of the skull. So it's going to make it wider where the hair comes out. So in the case of this man, this line is going to come out beyond his ear and out, and it's going to add some fullness there. And on this side, too, it's pretty subtle, but I believe it goes out about like that, so that it's wider where the hair is. Now let's see if there's some distance between his eyebrow and his hair. There is, but we don't see it in this drawing. That means that this line where his hair comes in is a little too close. So let's move that up here somewhere. And notice how straight the line is that comes down in the sideburn area. That's going to give him a little more room. This eye is a little larger than that eye. And in some cases, you'll notice in the photograph a person, there is a little asymmetry. But if it's too extreme, it may look odd. So I think I'll just make this eye just a little bit smaller so that there's more similarity between the eyes. Here you'll see a couple of lines. And in fact, there, are, there is a shadow there. But if you make it too much look like lines, it becomes too harsh. So I suggest that you shadow it in and then make a very subtle line in there that's more like a little shape than an actual line. Same thing here. This line can be very harsh, but if you make it a little subtle shadow, smear it a little bit, even if you add a little highlight over it, it won't look quite as, as strong. We want to know where the jaw ends and where the neck begins, so I'll darken that and color it in dark behind the neck so that that appears more prominently. So these are a few of the corrections that would improve this drawing. What you need to be willing to do is to look at your drawing, see if you can make some changes, then put it aside for a while or put it on the wall where you may notice it from time to time. Look at it in the mirror. Look at it upside down. Come back to it later. And don't be afraid to make some comparative measurements between your photograph and your drawing to see if perhaps a couple proportions are off. Those little changes will make a big difference in the final drawing. The corrections made on the student work will give you some good ideas about how you can make improvements on your own drawings. It's helpful to look at that segment of the video several times. Then, once you've mastered drawing portraits, you're going to want to add more. So in the next segment, we're going to take a quick look at how to draw the figure. Suppose I've already drawn a face, but I'm also interested in drawing the body. I can use the same basic notions that we did for drawing the head. I'll use a little circle here to indicate the neck. I'll use an oval shape for the shoulders. And then each part of the arm will be another oval. I can do a large oval for the torso. And here I won't even fit the whole figure on the page, but this represents the thigh and knee. And this represents the other thigh with the leg moving back this way. Now this is a very rough representation, but it gives me the general placement. Then I can go back and do a contour drawing, just as we did with the face. That is, I can look at any point 
and see exactly where the lines go, where the overlap occurs. And I can study those lines very carefully. You can really take your time when you're doing contour drawing, knowing that you have generally the placement is there. I see an overlap at the knee, and then the line comes out here again, for example. I see a slight overlap of a line here, another line coming in here. And so on. So this is the basic form. We'll spend much more time with this in the next course. But just to give you an idea that you can add the full figure to the drawing of the head. And now it's time for reflection and review. A chance to take a look at what you've learned in the course. You can think of it as predicting the past. It's a lot easier than predicting the future. Let's take a moment for reflection thinking about all the things that we've done during this course. We began with a pre-drawing. We looked at your limiting beliefs and changed those beliefs from I can't draw to I can draw. We took a look at the proportions of the face, the details, learning to really see each individual detail that makes the face unique. We took a look at the human skull to see how the structure of the bone influences the contours of the face. We learned how to shadow, starting with dark and going to light, how to use the pencil to smear the pencil, to erase back into the area, and get much more value and, and variation from a simple pencil. We talked about using your whole arm and feeling free as you move, not just drawing from the wrist. You had a chance to try it, to draw an actual portrait, and to get some feedback of how, about how to correct that portrait. And the review, that's what we're doing now. I also suggest that after you finish the tape, you close your eyes and review what you've learned and plan on looking at the tape more than once. Each time you'll learn something new and each time you'll have a chance to practice drawing portraits again. If you have a moment when you say, oh, I'm not so sure, just remember, yes, you can.